Don Nussberger back here in Hawthorne at our webcast desk. We have lost the data from the second stage. We had heard a call out that we were internal guidance, which means we were getting near the end of the approximately six minute burn of Starship. But we haven't uh, gotten any more data since then. So we think we may have lost the second stage. So we would not be into coast phase. We wouldn't be able to come back in an hour or so uh, and possibly get ready for re-entry. However, what we do know right now is we had an on-time launch at seven o'clock. Uh, we got through the boats. First stage looked beautiful with 33 Raptor engines firing. We got the hot staging, you know, the thing that we really wanted to see and impressed. We saw the separation, we saw the flip maneuver, we saw the light up of the six Raptor engines on Starship and it headed away. Everything really looked good. Hey everyone, welcome back again. SpaceX's revolutionary mega rocket, the largest ever constructed, embarked on its second test flight on November 18th, marking a momentous journey into space. The colossal vehicle known as Starship soared into the skies from SpaceX's Starbase test and manufacturing facility in Boca Chica, Texas at approximately 8 a.m. EDT. Enthusiastic spectators on South Padre Island bore witness to the awe-inspiring launch as the rocket, standing at an impressive height of nearly 400 feet, 122 meters, emitted an orange glow from its 33 first stage Raptor engines. However, the mission encountered a setback shortly after the separation of its stages. The super heavy booster, an integral part of the spacecraft, experienced a catastrophic explosion, followed by the Starship upper stage vehicle detonating before reaching its intended altitude. SpaceX referred to this unexpected turn of events as a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. The super heavy booster, the bottommost portion of the Starship system that gives the first burst of power at liftoff, was able to ignite all 33 of its Raptor engines at liftoff. That had not been done before. Even during ground tests, SpaceX has had a hard time getting all of those engines clustered together at the base of the rocket to power on consistently at the same time. But all of the engines appeared to function as intended this time around, burning together throughout the entire duration of Super Heavy's flight, which lasted about two and a half minutes, or until it ran out of most of its fuel. Super Heavy then exploded as SpaceX tested out a new means of separating the rocket booster from the Starship spacecraft. But SpaceX had already achieved something big. John Insprucker, SpaceX's principal integration engineer, provided insights during a live webcast indicating that the automated flight termination system on the second stage triggered late in the burn over the Gulf of Mexico. Despite the setback, SpaceX expressed optimism about the data collected from the flight and highlighted the opportunity for improvement in the hot staging sequence and hardware for future missions. This test flight marked the second attempt for the fully integrated Starship, comprised of the Super Heavy first stage booster and the Starship upper stage spacecraft. The previous liftoff in April experienced a self-destruct command about four minutes into flight, primarily due to the failure of the stages to separate. The rocket's super heavy first stage booster, though it appeared to achieve a crucial maneuver to separate with its core stage, exploded over the Gulf of Mexico shortly after detaching, a SpaceX webcast showed. Meanwhile, the core Starship booster carried further toward space. But a few minutes later, a company broadcaster said that SpaceX Mission Control suddenly lost contact with the vehicle. We have lost the data from the second stage. We think we may have lost the second stage, SpaceX's live stream host, John Insprucker, said. We have lost the data from the second stage. We had heard a call out that we were internal guidance, which means we were getting near the end of the approximately six minute burn of Starship. About eight minutes into the test mission, a camera view tracking the Starship booster appeared to show an explosion that would suggest the vehicle failed at that time. The rocket's altitude was 91 miles, 148 kilometers. The launch was the second attempt to fly Starship mounted atop its towering super heavy rocket booster following an April attempt that ended in failure about four minutes after liftoff. Ignition of Starship's 33 Raptor engines sent a shockwave across SpaceX's Starbase launch facilities moments before the rocket system began to gradually lift into the morning sky, clearing its launch tower in a thunderous ascent towards space. At roughly 43 miles, 
70 kilometers in altitude, the rocket system executed a crucial maneuver to separate the two stages. With the Super Heavy booster intended to plunge into Gulf of Mexico waters while the core Starship booster blasts further to space using its own engines. But Super Heavy blew up, and SpaceX has yet to detail the fate of the core stage. SpaceX, in a post on social media platform X, said the core Starship stage's engines fired for several minutes on its way to space. With a test like this, success comes from what we learn. And today's test will help us improve Starship's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multiplanetary, the company said. The mission's objective was to get Starship off the ground in Texas and into space just shy of reaching orbit, then plunge through Earth's atmosphere for a splashdown off Hawaii's coast. The launch had been scheduled for Friday, but was pushed back by a day for a last-minute swap of flight control hardware. To address this issue, SpaceX implemented a new strategy called hot staging, where the upper stage's engines initiate firing before complete separation from the Super Heavy booster. Although the stage separation occurred on time during this flight, the Super Heavy booster exploded shortly afterward. SpaceX's quality engineering manager, Kate Tice, shared the company's commitment to refining the hot staging sequence and hardware for subsequent launches. The Starship upper stage continued flying for a brief period, with telemetry lost about eight minutes after liftoff. While the spacecraft did not achieve full orbit, it exceeded the altitude of the first test flight, reaching 148 kilometers, 91 miles. SpaceX considered the mission a success despite the rapid unscheduled disassembly, emphasizing the valuable data obtained for future enhancements. The significance of Starship extends beyond individual test flights as it plays a pivotal role in NASA's Artemis program for returning astronauts to the moon. Starship is designated as the lunar lander for the Artemis 3 mission, scheduled for late 2025 or early 2026. SpaceX's ambitious plans for the colossal rocket extend to interplanetary travel with Elon Musk envisioning it as a vehicle that enables humanity to establish a sustainable presence beyond Earth. The key to this vision lies in Starship's reusability, setting it apart from SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. While Falcon 9's first stage and payload fairings are reusable, the second stage is not. In contrast, Starship is designed for full and rapid reusability, featuring a launch tower with chopstick arms to catch the Super Heavy booster for quick relaunch. Despite the setback, SpaceX remains focused on advancing Starship's development. Infrastructure preparations for Starship launches from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida are already underway, and SpaceX aims to increase launch cadence with refined designs. The ultimate goal is to conduct regular Starship flights, possibly as frequently as once a month, contributing to its certification for crewed launches and supporting NASA's ambitious lunar exploration plans. As SpaceX investigates the causes of the Starship failure, the company remains committed to overcoming challenges and achieving the long-term vision of making humanity an interplanetary species. A successful test would have marked a key step toward achieving SpaceX's ambition, producing a large, multi-purpose spacecraft capable of sending people and cargo back to the moon later this decade for NASA, and ultimately to Mars. Musk, SpaceX's founder, chief executive, and chief engineer, also sees Starship as eventually replacing the company's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket as the centerpiece of its launch business that already lofts most of the world's satellites and other commercial payloads into space. NASA, SpaceX's primary customer, has a considerable stake in the success of Starship, which the U.S. Space Agency is counting on to play a central role in its human spaceflight program.